I've never known a season like it for the sort of the the, the drag to Chel- to Cheltenham and the sort of anticipation. You really want it to be now, Daryl Jacob, Lee Moss, don't you? You want it next week, don't you? Yeah, it's obviously our Olympics, isn't it? It's something that we gear ourselves up to um, every year. You know, the, the the best horses in England, Ireland, and France now coming over. Um, you know, really is our Olympics, and like you say, the closer it gets. You just want it to come and happen, really. But it seems now, particularly with the Dublin race for, Racing Festival, and you were saying there's a, the the dominance of uh, of these fantastic Irish horses is that there is that the, the the gap, the hiatus seems to be so long now between then uh, and Cheltenham. All you feel like all the dealing's done. Yeah, pretty much. Like a lot of the horses now, they would have had their preps and 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 stuff like that. Um, so now, really, they've, they're, it's just getting the, the putting the final touches on them now, really, isn't it? Um, you know, obviously, I think we're going to Kempton. Um, you know, we're galloping some of Nicky's horses on Tuesday morning. You know, they kind of, you know, they have their Christmas and then they haven't had a race since, so they're getting primed. So a lot of, the, I suppose, they'll be stepping up their work now for um, and putting the final touches on them for the festival. Right. Should we talk about El Fabiolo, who was very, very good at the Dublin Racing Festival when you rode this horse? Going into the race, were you surprised that Paul Townend had chosen to ride Appreciate It and that you, you ended up getting on him? No, to be honest with you, Paul could have chosen... I mean, there was, Could have chosen Dice uh, like Dynamo Dice as well, Dynamo. I mean, you know, the, 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 the quality, the strength and depth that Willie has in that division. I mean, you know, he, he could have chosen any of them. And look at... not Like and I said going in before the race, it was... It was pretty much, I thought, it was the horse that was going to was was going to jump the slickest and, and travel the best. It was probably going to come out on top. And uh, you know, I just found, got my lad into a lovely rhythm. Um, you know, Dysart went out in front, but you know, I always felt where I was sat. I, I always felt like as if I controlled the race from where I sat. You know, let Dysart Dynamo do his thing. But I always felt where I where I was in the race, I was very very happy. And you know, barred a mistake that I made and not the horse at. Um, three out or four out, whatever it was. I, he, he was. I thought he was very, very good. I mean, this looks incredibly strong for me. The horse who's labouring in fourth and runs on for third, Bambridge, is no slouch, even if he does want a little bit further. And you drew right away in the closing stages. Uh, you're perfectly placed to judge whether it's this horse or John Bond in the Arkle. Let's face it, you've ridden one enough, you've seen the other one enough. Yeah, look, I mean, you got to think about El Fabiolo. He's He's a relatively un, unexposed, you know, he's only had, that was only his, I think it was the seventh run of his life. John Bond's had a lot more runs, he's a lot more streetwise. And when they met at Aintree, it was El, El Fabiolo's, it was only his second run over, over hurdles, whereas John Bond had the, the whole season, the prep. So, you know, I think there's a lot of scope for, for, for our horse to, to improve. Um, and I think he has done, he's done immensely from last year to this year. And I think, and me personally, I think he's going to get better. The more racing he gets, the more experience he gets, because, like you say, he is a relatively unexposed. He's a big, strong, powerful horse, and you know he. Once all of these come together, I think he's going to be a, a really, really exciting horse for for William Double Green. Is there any shot you can get on him at Cheltenham? No, no. <laughs> um, look, it's it's just great to be part of him. You know, we don't know what the riding arrangements or are, are anything are at the moment, but look at, like I said to you, I'm just very, very happy, and I'm just. I'm enjoying the ride. Yeah, and and the because he's got so many of these horses that the, the opportunities just keep coming every so often. Don't yeah, they? That's and, look the thing. At, and that's like you say that was the opportunity came on Blue Lord earlier on in the year. The opportunity came on him. The opportunity came on for James de Burley. So look at it. You just um, it's it's a big big team that we have, um, and we need everyone. Um, pulling at the right strings mm. to make it work well and, and there's no better man than that than, than Anthony Bromley and he's just he's, he's, he's just brilliant Anthony Bromley is Well this is Blue Lord at Leopardstown over Christmas time he then came back in the Dublin chase and ran okay but gentlemen to me rather um, took everybody off their feet do you think he was achieving as much as everyone thought at Christmas, or do you think he performed below par in Dublin? Well, th- th- this race is obviously interesting because Gentleman is just out the back of the picture there, and he obviously didn't go this day mm. for whatever reason. He didn't go and he didn't jump very, very, um, didn't jump well. But the other day, um, 
when um, when Blue Lord ran against him, he went out and he was on a go and then he went forward. And I mean, gentlemen, I think he beat Edward Stone at he Aintree, did. didn't he? he did. yeah, so, you know, there, he's a very, very good horse when he's right and when he's on his day. And he just went out. He found a beautiful rhythm out in front and he went a real good gallop. Um, I was struggling with Scorial to sort of, to, to sort of go to gallop. But I knew halfway down the back straight, Blue Lord wasn't traveling the same way as when I rode him in the previous time. When I rode him the previous time, you know, he was always in his comfort zone. Again, I felt like in the position that I was, I was controlling the race from where I was. So I was very, very comfortable and I jumped great. Whereas the other day when Paul rode him, um, I just think, I just think the horse was just a little bit flat. Um, but again, you, you've, you've got the master and Willie and, you know, you can, you can guarantee your bottom dollar is he'll come to Cheltenham and, um, you know, he'll be 100% and, um, he'll be, he'll be A1 to, to go to war. Mm. Which race should he run in? Um, look at, he, he's always, we've always felt like he's, you know, he's a good, you know, he'd stay two and a half, um, really well. You know, when I rode him, um, when I won on him, um, over there, I mean, he traveled ever so beautifully, you know, he's jumping, he traveled. I mean, that was a side that we, we sort of hadn't seen because even when he was a, in his previous year as a novice, he was never quite on the bridle the way he was with me that day. And that's what really kind of lit us all up because uh-huh. the way he traveled and the way he jumped that day, um, with me. But then obviously Willie started him out over two and a half mile at Clonmel, you know, and he beat a really good horse that won the, the King George, um, Willie's other stable companion. So, Tornado Flyer. Uh, Tornado Flyer. So, you know, that was the start of his season. That was his first run. So we thought we'd go down that route, but then what he showed with me the last time when I won on him, um, oh. you know, he's got pace and I think he's just, I think he's a very, very good horse and I think whatever angle we go down, I think he's going to be very, very competitive. But, you know, as you know, you know, things change. I mean, Willie's main horse got um, got injured, in he? Coming back for Ryanair. So, it, you know, that leaves that door open a little bit. But then you've got but the mighty got Shishkin. Shishkin. Exactly. He was good. He was good. I thought Nick was beautiful on him as well. I thought that was very, very satisfactory to, I know how much Nicky, the pressure that he was put under, but I was absolutely, I was chuffed a bit for, for, for Nicky and, and, and Nico that day. I mean, that was, that was a special day. What did he say when he came in the weighing room the other day? Um, but to be fair, I wasn't at that meeting, so <laughs> right, I wasn't okay. at that meeting. He was very but, good on here last weekend, um, to be fair. Yeah, um, but I, I spoke to him that evening and he was, you know, he was, that was a job well done. He, not impossible. You could, you could land on Blue Lord somewhere. Again, the, it's the all, donut, look, it's, it's, it's all up. Yeah, it's all, yeah. it's all up in up in the air. Look at like you say, whatever, whatever I'm asked to ride, um, you know, I'd be very grateful, mm. very, very appreciated, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll try my very, very best on him. No doubt, um, Zambella. Uh, she'll she'll have another stab, won't she? She how close yeah. would she have got if she hadn't fallen when she went? Yeah, to Yeah, she was before? going well then, um, and just typical her. It's just she's she's taken. A lot of time together, jumping um, together. She's she's never been the most straightforward. She could land in one, she could gallop through one when she was a novice. But again, Nigel and his team have done a lot of work. She's got she's got better every year, and you know what? This year, it's the best that she's ever felt. Really, she feels really, really good for whatever reason. Nick, I've no idea, but you know, when I won her at Doncaster that day, she was she was brilliant um, she was very very good and I think she'll go there she'll be a lot more competitive she wasn't beaten far in it last year mind she finished four wasn't beaten that far in it last year and I think she can uh, she can hopefully have a good chance again this year and being there or thereabouts yeah she's she's honest isn't she yeah oh, she she's as game as a pebble she tries very very hard and that's her forte she's she's got a big heart and she's got the head down the ears back and she wants to please just looking at some of the other horses that Simon and Isaac have done well with this season. I mean, the list is exhausting. Yeah, fun, fun, fun. Fan de Blues, Ampere Pass, Hunter's Yarn, Dark Raven, Tax for Max, Nuzrep we spoke about yesterday, James Duberle, Zarak the Brave, they've all won Gold Cup. I mean, any and, any and all of these could end up going to, going to the festival. Yeah, potentially. But like you say, there is, you know, it's, you know, there is still a lot of um, spring festivals, you know, yeah. for the rest of the year now as well. So, you know, you know, so I would imagine some of the horses, you know, and that's why Ant is, is so good and he's he's a vital cog um, to what we have because he's very, very good at placing horses. Like, say, he, him and Joseph placed Nuzeret to come over here and, 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 and win the donuts yesterday. And, um, you know, there's obviously going to be a lot of discussions between between now and, and, and March and, 
you know, the one thing about double green is, you know, we want them to go there. They want We want them to have the best chance of winning. But, you know, we also, we love these horses and we want to have longevity. And if the race doesn't quite fit, you know, Ant and Simon Isaac and whatever the trainer's in, you know, we'll have the discussion and, and you know, we might avoid Chell and we might go a different route because some of them might want them to come down the hill very well or whatever it might be. Mm. You know, all these discussions have got to be, you know, there's going to be a lot of discussions, a lot of topics, a lot of horses to go through in the next um, three or four weeks. If you could have a ride in the Gold Cup, who would it be on? Oh, God. Um, now you put me... Um, Willie's obviously got a, a wonderful strength and depth. I mean, there's... I don't know. I'd have to think about that. I haven't really studied it that well. but well, um, I can offer you Galapande Shaw, the hot favourite. Yeah, the but Irish he's the Gold obvious Cup. one, isn't he? Okay. I mean, he's the, he's the obvious one, but I mean, you're not going to get on him. But I'll give you Statler. <laughs> I he ran really well, actually. It was re- I, I thought he ran really well because the race, um, as Patrick said, it wasn't really run quick enough for him, but mm. I thought he stayed on really well. I could offer you Aplutar. Could he bounce back or is it hoping against hope? Aplutar, yeah. I mean, now you, now you real often, there's there's a few of them there, isn't there? I'll give you any of the I'll ones give, I'll go the with the favourite. I'd be boring. I'd be boring. Well, I'll why not? Well, it's not boring. It's just sensible. It's just playing <laughs> the percentages. Yeah. No, i go with the favourite. Okay. Um, Lee, who would you ride? Uh, so... If I knew that Aplutar was going to run to the level he ran at last year, I'd be with him because mm. I think that would make him the best horse in the race. But at the minute, I would be on Noble Yates. Noble with, Yates. The cheap piece he's yeah. back on. Uh, I thought that his run last time was encouraging. I suspect Emmett Mullins, who seems to be quite a clever man, uh, will have left a bit to play with. I say I think that reapplication of cheap piece will make a big difference. And I think he'll win the Gold Cup. OK, Noble Yates for you. Um, Daryl, you've got to head off to Fontwell. The yeah. So Royal. Yeah, Scoey, yeah, Scoey, yeah. Um, another one of my warriors. I think uh, I read on the way down this morning, I think this is his 50th uh, career start. Again, just been on a wonderful journey that's a with bit, That's a bit of doing for a grade one horse, isn't it? Yeah, he's, he's my winning most horse. Um, I've had 50. Ever? F- yeah, he's been a, an absolute rock for me. Um, you know, he's just, you know, he's just, he's not a very big horse, but he's just got a huge heart. His will to win. Look at him there, the ears back, head down. Wants to, wants to, to do everything he can to please you. And, uh, I just, I, I love him. He's my little pocket rocket. I love him. Has anyone else ever ridden him? Yeah. So I think Wayne Hutchinson won on him one day up at Doncaster when I had to, as a novice, he won the, would have put, is it the grade two trust trying to think out mm. the top of my head? I think he might won on him up there, but I think he's the only one that, and I think he won in in France, be obviously before he came over here. But yeah, he's he's been an incredible horse for for us. Um, you were aboard Joseph O'Brien's Nuzret for Simon and Isaac, and you won the four year old hurdle, the the Adonis hurdle. Where does he stack up? Do you think where's his career going? He's a really nice horse. I've funny enough, we go back quite a while and. Uh, Few years before he even thought about jumping, and I I rode him up the gallops when um, as a two year old, and um, I thought going up the gallops, I was thinking, well, this could be a really nice jumper, and I said it to them at the time, and uh, they were hoping he was going to be a very very good flat horse, but he always had again, he's got a lot of power, he's a good jumper here. See there two out, first time seeing you know racing on the white hurdles as well, but you know watch him coming down to the last here, he's. He, He's got a lovely way about going. He's got a nice bit of speed, and you know, and he's he's got a great attitude. Would you have won anyway if Percy Way hadn't made that mistake? Yeah, um, I, yeah, I would have. I was starting to, to to you know get ahead of steam, and I, I I thought I had yeah going down to last. I thought I had um, Jamie beaten. Where Jamie was very very good. He actually got four lengths on me going to the second last, and after that, and that's actually when Jamie nearly nearly stole the race so away he, from if me. If you'd been beaten. So, Would you have been beating yourself up? Well, no, because he's a horse, like, even when he got to the front here, he sort of pricked his ears, you know, and he wasn't doing a whole lot, where I kind of, my plan was all along was to try and sit in behind him, going from two out to the last to get him covered and then pull him out and then produce him going to, with the way the race unfolded with the faller, uh, three out, it sort of opened up a gap and then Paddy wasn't really going well enough down the inside. Harry Cobden was getting a nice... Um, seemed through from from the faller, and Jamie was down the inner. Jamie went tried to steal a race from the front, which was a great ride from him, fantastic ride for him. But what I had to try and do is I had to play my cards. But then I ended up obviously coming around Harry, mm. 
and I had basically I, I had too much daylight from the second last to the last to the line so my horse probably I probably could have done been covered up a little bit longer so could that horse you rode there could Nuzret be competitive in a better race or could be competitive in a Boodles or could he even be an outsider for the Triumph Hurdle well, he's, he's not in the triumph he hurdle. In the no, triumph? he's not in the no. triumph hurdle. He has obviously. He's still got the the boodles entry. Um, but you don't fancy him. What do you know? What I think he looks kind of pro. I think there's I think there's bigger and better targets later on in the, in, in the year. To be honest with you, um, I've always liked him. He's always had a great attitude. I think Joseph's done very very well with him, and I think just coming over with the race that he had yesterday, coming over, going back, and then coming back again for Cheltenham. You know, maybe, maybe, I don't know, it might be a step too far, but look, it just, there's loads more spring targets for the rest of the, you know, for the rest of the springs, lots of festivals. He likes good ground. He prefers going right-handed rather than left, but I'm not saying that he can't go left-handed, but I think if you were being choosy, he would prefer to go right-handed rather than left, a bit like a footballer, isn't he? You know, he's right-footed rather than left-footed, but there's plenty of, I think there's plenty, Ferio still got a great juvenile there as well coming up and, so I think there's there's other targets that I wouldn't be too disappointed if he didn't yeah. go to Cheltenham, put it that way. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.